Good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the day 2nd of March 2022. Displayed here are the list of news articles chosen for today's discussion. See as I assured you there is an economic topic today. It is about the gig economy and gig workers. Now without wasting much time let's get into the discussion. Look at this editorial article here. It talks about the difficulties faced by the prisoners and their families. It particularly talks about the conflict zone area in Bastar in the state of Chhattisgarh. See the article says that the lives of those arrested and their families depend upon the efficiency of the judicial system and good governance of jails. See jails and courts do not matter much for most of the people. but in conflict regions such as bastar where many families have some members in jails at any point of time the jail conditions and speedy trials matter the most so intermittent suspensions of court work and jail visits have created enormous hardships for prisoners and their families during the covid crisis and this is the essence of the news article given here in this backdrop let us learn about the terminologies related to the conviction and the rights and problems of the under trial prisoners okay before getting into the discussion the syllabus relevant to this news article is given here for your reference please go through it now let us start our discussion by seeing some basics first of all let us understand about accused person See an accused is a person who is charged with a crime or on trial for a crime but not yet proven a criminal. See we all know that India is a democratic country and so the concept of fair trial is a constitutional obligation. In Indian courts the accused person is not guilty until proven beyond reasonable doubt. Know that the rights of an accused can be categorized into rights before trial rights during trial and rights after trial see the accused rights include fair trial getting bail hiring a criminal lawyer then free legal advice etc etc see the most basic right of an accused are the rights of any normal indian citizens like you can say right to equality before law and protection of law See, it is given in Part Three of the Indian Constitution, which is nothing but the fundamental rights. Other rights fall under the Criminal Law and the Indian Evidence Act of 1872. With this basic understanding, now let us see the difference between the convicted person and the under trial prisoner. See, generally, conviction means to declare an accused person guilty of a crime. at the conclusion of a criminal prosecution and a convicted person is an individual who has been found guilty of a crime and as a result serves a sentence as punishment for the act in the jail as a prisoner okay now let us see about the under trial prisoners see under trial prisoners are unconvicted prisoners and they stay in jail during the period of investigation inquiry or trial of the offence for which he was arrested now you will think why an unconvicted person should stay in jail generally under trial prisoners stay in jail because they are charged with non bailable offence or their bail has been denied or the accused is charged with bailable offence but fail to furnish the bail bond that is accused will not be granted bail in the non bailable offence if he or she has failed to fulfill the mandatory conditions stated in order by the courts of law okay and these are some of the reasons why the accused might be staying in the jail now let us see the rights available for these under trial prisoners See there are some rights enjoyed by under trial prisoners which are necessary for them to seek justice. We will see some of the rights now. Now the first one is right to the fundamental rights. See fundamental rights provided by part 3 of the Indian Constitution are the first and foremost rights which are enjoyed by the under trial prisoners during the trials. The most important among them is article 14 which talks about the equality before law and equal protection of law 
See here equality before law reads as a state shall not deny to any person equality before the law. Now let us see the other rights related to the fundamental rights. Firstly take the right to life and personal liberty. This right is provided by Article 21 of the Indian Constitution which reads as no person shall be deprived of his life and personal liberty except according to the procedure established by the law. Secondly, we can talk about right to live with human dignity. In new dimension of Article 21, the Supreme Court held that right to live does not mean mere confinement to physical existence but it includes within its ambit the right to live with human dignity. Okay. Now thirdly, we can talk about right to know the grounds of arrest. See, this is provided by Article 22, Clause 1 of the Indian Constitution. See, this article provides that a person arrested for an offence under ordinary law be informed as soon as about the grounds of arrest. In addition to the constitutional provision, section 50 of the Criminal Procedure Code also provides for the same. Okay. Now, lastly, let us talk about the right to consult a legal practitioner. See, it is one of the fundamental rights enshrined in our Indian Constitution and this is provided in Article 22 of Clause 1. Okay. See, this article provides that no person who is arrested shall be denied the right to consult and to be defended by a legal practitioner of his choice. Okay. Now, having seen the fundamental rights, the next right is right to be examined by a medical practitioner. This right is provided by Section 54 of the Code of Criminal Procedure of 1973. The next one is right to bail. It is provided by Section 436 of Code of Criminal Procedure of 1973. Now moving on to the next one, the right to speedy trial. See, justice delayed is justice denied. This is all the more true in a criminal trial where the accused is not released on bail during the pendency of the trial and trial is inordinately delayed. In section 437 clause 6 of criminal procedure code, it is provided that if the accused is in detention and the trial is not completed within 60 days from the first date fixed for hearing, then he shall be released on bail. See, the next one we are going to talk about is the right of appeal. This right is enjoyed by the under trial if the conclusion of trial leads him towards a conviction. See, the provisions relating to appeal has been provided under section 378 to 392 of the Code of Criminal Procedure of 1973. Know that this right to appeal is the statutory right of a person and the inherent right. Now the next one we are going to talk about is right to security of life inside the jail. See it is the duty of the state to provide security to the under trial prisoners. If it fails and any incident take place in jail then the government has to pay compensation to the dependents of the deceased person. Okay. And the next one we are going to see is right to have the benefit of the presumption of innocence till guilt is proved beyond reasonable doubt. See, the above provision has been defined under section 101 to 105 of the Indian Evidence Act 1872. Now let us see the next right which is the right to be tried by an independent and impartial judge. Now the last one we are going to see is the right to be heard about the sentence upon conviction. Let us say the arrested person is convicted that is proven guilty beyond doubt. Then he or she has a right to be heard about the sentence given for him or her upon conviction. So these are some of the rights enjoyed by the under trial prisoners. These rights are justified if the arrested person proves to be the convict. That is, he or she is the one who committed the crime. But there are also other scenarios where the arrested person turns out to be innocent after the end of the trial. In such cases, compensation will be given to the person who is wrongfully arrested. Okay. 
See section 358 of the Criminal Procedure Code empowers the court to order a person to pay compensation to another person for causing a police officer to arrest such other person wrongfully. Okay. Now let us see some of the difficulties faced by the under trials. See the under trial prisoners forms the major part of the prison administration in Indian jails. And it leads to overcrowding. See, overcrowding in prisons has to be brought down so as to reduce the population of under trial prisoners. This cannot happen without the court and the police working together. Am I right? See, such overcrowding has created many problems for the under trial prisoners. We will see them all one by one. See, there is no separate prison for under trials. So, in the absence of any scientific classification methods of separating them from over convicted criminals, there is a chance of first time and circumstantial offenders to turn into criminals. See, the next concern is that prisons are often a dangerous place for the first time offenders who are subjected to group violence and mishandling by the police. So, moving on to the next prominent problem. See, due to overcrowding in the prison and shortage of adequate space to lodge prisoners, most of the prisons face problems to keep them in safe and healthy conditions. Most of the prisoners, including the under trials, come from socio-economic and disadvantaged sections of the society. Where you can see the disease, malnutrition and absence of medical services are common thing. And such people know are crammed in with each other in unhealthy conditions. Infections and communicable diseases will spread easily among them. See a sample study conducted by the National Human Rights Commission of India in early 1998 no, showed that 76% of the deaths in Indian prisons were due to tuberculosis. Now let us see another major problem. See, the under trial prisoners face homosexual abuse as prisons are place where same sex people are lodged. So, being removed from their natural partners forces them to look for alternative ways to satisfy their sexual urge. See, they often target the young and feeble prisoners. Now, the resistance showed by them leads to aggravated violence on them. Sometimes they are subjected to massive homosexual gang rapes. See, this leads to trauma forcing them to commit suicide. See, apart from these problems, one major outside problem is there. That is, due to long absence of the main breadwinner, family of the under trial prisoner many a times is forced to destitution and also faces social stigmatization. In many cases, this may result into children turning towards delinquency and exploitation by others. So, the problems that we discussed are the problems faced by the under trials in India. So, what can be done for that? See, the under trial prisoners are those who have been accused of some crime and waiting to appear before the court. Am I right? They cannot be called as a convict because their guilt has not been proved. A huge majority of under trial prisoners are poor who are unable to furnish bail for their release. So, they should be made aware about their legal rights, that is, the right to free legal aid, right to get the legal practitioner of their choice, then right to bail, etc, etc. So, these people has to be made aware of all these legal rights. See, the number of under trials in prison can be reduced only by speeding up the trial. Then by simplifying of the bail procedure and by periodic review of the cases of under trials. By all these, we can reduce the number of under trials in prison. Moreover, there should be a separate prison for the under trial prisoners. So with this, we have come to the end of the discussion. We saw about the issues in jails during COVID times and after that we saw different terminologies such as accused person, convicted person and an under trial person. After that we saw the rights of under trial person and finally we ended our discussion by seeing the problems faced by the under trials in India.
also we saw some of the solutions to it so these points can be utilized in addressing questions related to good governance in jail or the questions related to judicial system enrichment in the mains examination with these key points in mind let us move on to the next article discussion now have a look at this news article this news article talks about gig economy see the task move mentioned in this news article is a tech driven task fulfillment platform that connects companies with pre screened deployable gig workers so according to them the data available on its platform suggests a remarkably growing participation of indian women in the gig economy so taking this as an opportunity let us quickly go through what is gig economy and who are classified as gig workers okay see according to the industrial relations code 2020 employee is defined as any person employed by an industrial establishment for what all they are taking these workers to do any skilled semi skilled or unskilled manual operational supervisory managerial and even administrative technical or clerical work and for all these work they do for hire or reward so now what is an employer mean an employer means a person who employs whether directly or through any person or on his behalf or on behalf of any person one or more employee or worker in his establishment so now you would have understood who is an employee and who is an employer am i right now this definition assumes an employer employee relationship which may be missing in some of the newer jobs see when a person participates in a work outside of this traditional employer employee relationship then such a kind of worker is known as a gig worker okay see the gig economy can be broadly classified into the physical gig economy and the digital gig economy when you take the physical gig economy it includes low to semi skilled workers who offer their services through a work on demand platform for this you can say example as uber ola zomato urban club etc etc then when you take the digital gig economy it encompasses semi to high skilled workers and these workers know will work directly or through a mobile platform including knowledge workers like freelancers independent consultants and self employed professionals okay see the nobel laureate christopher pesarets an economist is regarded as a pioneer in formalizing the model for gig economy in the employment context he expanded the concept of frictional unemployment what is this frictional unemployment means this frictional unemployment is referred to as a situation when the workers are jobless and looking for job in a healthy economy okay just imagine a labor market where some firms are looking for workers in one city and the workers no are looking for jobs in another city this will result in unfilled jobs and unemployed workers am i right so but today no through its matching algorithm and appropriate rating system technology has been able to build greater trust between strangers okay also no today due to the technological innovation with the job platforms using sophisticated algorithms can appropriately match these jobs with the job seekers and reduce this friction okay see this appropriate matching and minimal transaction cost unlock and generate excess value so in simple terms a shift from a full time 9 to 5 job to an on demand freelance and task based economy can be termed as gig economy i hope you understood what is a gig economy by now okay
See, the Code on Social Security recognizes this gig workers as a new occupational category. See, they are defining this gig worker as a person who performs work or participates in work arrangement and earns from such activities outside the traditional employer-employee relationship. Okay, now let me give you a few examples of gig workers. You can take freelancers, independent contractors, project-based workers and temporary or part-time hires as examples of gig workers. Okay, so that's all about this news article. So we have used this news article in order to learn about an economic concept that is gig economy and who are all gig workers. So with these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next article discussion. See this article here, it says that hundreds of people were present at the post-harvest paddy fields in front of Uttrali Kavu, one of the important temples in central Kerala. See, according to the article, it is after two years the Puram was celebrated in full swing. So, this is the essence of the article given here. In this context, let us learn about the festival Trishur Puram. Now, let us start our discussion. See, Trishur Puram is known as the festival of festivals. And know that Trishur Puram has a tradition of more than 200 years. The festival is held on Malayalam month of Maytam. That is during April to May months. See the festival related events take place at the Vadakum Nadan temple situated in the heart of Trishu town and the adjoining Tekinkada region of Kerala. See this festival is considered to be the mother of all Purams and this yearly temple festival was the brainchild of Shaktan Tampuran, the Maharaja of Kochi who organized the festival with the participation of 10 temples. What are the 10 temples? They are Paramikavu, Tiruvambadi, Kanimangalam, Karamukku, Lalur, Chura Kotukara, Panamukkamboli, Ayanthol, Chambukkavu and Neithila Kavu. See, during the 18th and 19th century, this festival was inaugurated by Raja Ramavarma, who is also known as Shaktan Tampuran. See, he is the king of Cochin. Like I said before, it is a 200-year-old festival. See, there is a reason behind the formation of Trisur Puram festival. And the reason is Aratupura Puram. Why? Because at that time, there was only one Puram which is Aratupura Puram in Aratupura. All surrounding regions and Thrissur people used to visit the Puram every year. But once, due to heavy rains, Thrissur people were late for the festival. And after that, the Thrissur people were not allowed to participate in the festival. This made the people of Thrissur angry and they went to the King Raja Ramavarma for justice. Then he gave a solution to the Thrissur people and its surrounding village people to celebrate their own temple festival. So he ordered the ten temples surrounding Thrissur to bring their deities to Vadakunnathan temple to celebrate a massive temple festival. From that day, this Thrissur Puram festival has started gaining huge popularity with its mass celebration. Today, Thrissur Puram is famous among all the Purams of Kerala, even Aratupura. See, the Puram festival mainly happens between two groups representing the geographic divisions of Paramikavu and Thiruvampadi. They will compete in their respective presentations of richly decorated elephants, traditional orchestra called Panchavatyam, the swift and rhythmic changing of brightly colored and squeened parcels called Kudamatam and the dazzling fireworks in the early morning hours or the festival highlights. See, the main importance of this Puram is here you can experience a perfect view of unity in diversity. Even though it is a Hindu festival, every religion will take part in the festival. Coming to the festival, by early morning the festival begins with the Madatil Varavu ceremony. Nearly 200 artists will play their musical instruments inside the temple. 
Later, the central attraction of the festival, Kudamatam, will take place. It is the ceremony of 15 elephants and a musical band team of two groups will enter the temple. Thiruvambadi and Paramikavu are the groups who run the celebrations with a wonderful axe. Each group represents five temples of surrounding villages. During the ceremony, the two groups facing each other exchange their ornamented umbrellas or parcels brought on by elephants. The name Kuda means umbrella and Mata means change. It is the Kudamatam ceremony, a crowd puller of the Puram. Next comes the Ilanjitara Melam which is the key attraction of the celebration. At the Ilanji tree in Vadakunadan temple, this act will take place. With perfect rhythmic percussions, the melam will be preceded by the artist and it is a traditional act of Keralites. Another wonderful musical performance, Panchavatiyam, is also a key attraction. It is a group of five percussions with wind instruments and giving a musical performance. After completing all the processions and rituals, the festival comes to an end with the Purnacharam Choli Piriyal ceremony. All the ten temple idols that came from the surrounding villages will be sent back to their respective temples. At last, with a grand ceremony of firing the firecrackers without a break known as Pagal Vedicate, the temple festival will be ended. That's all about this news article. See, as I mentioned, this Puram festival is the best example when you write answers for questions that are related to unity in diversity. So, utilize these points mentioned here to enrich your main answer also. There can be a prelims question from this topic. With these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next article discussion. Take a look at this news article. This news article talks about the faunal survey conducted at the Shendurni Wildlife Sanctuary in Kollam. See, this survey has been spotting six unseen species including Steppe Buzzard, Indothemis Karnataka and even Indian Blue Robin. See, this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us quickly go through some of the important points mentioned in this article. And finally, we will see how important are these kind of flora and fauna surveys. Okay. Firstly, know that this faunal survey is nothing but a three-day annual exercise that is spearheaded by the city-based Travancur Natural History Society, that is TNHS. See, this is done in collaboration with the forest department and various non-governmental organizations. Okay. See, in this survey, as many as 153 bird species were recorded and this survey was held between 25th and 27th of February 2022. See, in this survey, six species which were unknown before is recorded. They are Steppe Eagle, Steppe Buzzard, Bodilan's Blackbird, Ashambu Sholakili, then Indian Blue Robin and Blitz Pipit. When we specifically talk about the findings, the Great Indian Hornbill, the State Bird, all these were recorded in almost all the base camps of the survey. See, the other notable finds included Lesser Fish Eagle, Squire Tail Bulbul, Ceylon Frogmouth, Leggy's Hawk Eagle, Great Eared Nightjar and Eurasian Sparrow Hawk. See, with the new sightings, the number of bird species in the sanctuary has gone up to 255. Also note that the butterfly assessment found 191 species including 4 new ones. The 4 new ones are Clear Sailor, Common Ciliate Blue, White Orange Tip and the Small Cupid. See, this enhanced the existing checklist to 270 species. Other interesting sightings were the Southern Birdwing, Trevancore Evening Brown, Southern Duffer, Banded Royal, Plain Palm Dart and Spot Puffins. The refuge was also home to migratory birds such as Common Albatross, Lesser Albatross and Plain Puffins. 
Apart from this, the smallest Indian butterfly, the grass jewel, was also sighted during the survey. See, as many as 64 species of dragonflies, damselfies were also recorded from the region. Significant number of elephants, gars, tigers and nilgiri striped squirrel were also found during the survey. See, just have a glance of all these species name. If at all a question comes, like whether these species are found in Chenduni Wildlife Sanctuary, then you can recollect and answer the question. Okay. See, finally, let us see how the flora and fauna surveys play an important role in various conservation activities. Firstly, it helps in documenting biological diversity. Secondly, it helps in determining the conservation value of particular area or species. Thirdly, the survey helps in preparing management guidelines for natural resources. And finally, it helps in describing the distribution of species and the environmental factors that influence this. And thus, it helps in developing hypothesis about the habitats. Okay, so that's all about this news article. So you can utilize the points that we discussed finally, like the points that we mentioned about the importance of survey in enriching your main questions that are based on conservation activities. Okay, so these key points in mind. Now let's move on to the last part of our discussion that is the prelims practice question discussion. Okay, now look at this first question. It is about the Trisur Puram. And it is a two statement question. So, you have to go through both the statements. See here, both statements are correct. And we saw in a discussion that during the 18th and 19th centuries, this festival, that is the Trisur Puram, was inaugurated by Raja Ramavarma, who is also called as Shaktan Tampuran. And he is the king of Cochin. So here the first statement which says it is a festival celebrated in Kerala and it was started by Raja Rama Verma who is also called as Shaktan Tampuran is correct. And we saw that in Madatil Varavu ceremony nearly 200 artists will play their musical instruments inside the temple. And in Kudamattam ceremony the two groups that is Thiruvambadi and Paramikavu exchange their ornamented umbrellas or parasols brought on by the elephants. And we also saw that the Panchavatiam is a group of five percussions with wind instruments giving musical performance. So, the second statement which says Kudamattam, Madatil Varavu and Panchavatiam are the key ceremonies of the festival is correct. See, the question here demands for correct statement. So, your answer here will be option C. Both 1 and 2 are correct. Now, look at the second question. It is about the economic topic that we discuss, which is the gig economy and gig workers. See, as we already saw in the discussion, when a person participates in a work outside the traditional employer-employee relationship, then such a kind of worker is known as a gig worker. In simple terms, you can say a shift from a full-time 9-to-5 job to an on-demand or freelance and task-based economy can be termed as gig economy. Now coming to the question, here the given six statements are talking about the issues faced by the gig workers. Am I right? Yes, they face issues like harsh working conditions, quality of work and the temporary nature of engagement, then absence of a social security net, then they will be asked to work for long hours, delayed payouts, then pressure to maximize speed of delivery. All these issues are faced by them as they are out of the traditional employer-employee relationship. So the answer for your question will be option C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. That is all the statements given above represents the issue faced by the gig workers. See, keep these points in mind and this can be utilized for your mains answer writing as it talks about the issues faced by the gig workers in the gig economy. Okay. Now, looking at the last question. See, they had given few species name and they are asking it is related to which of the following. The options given are butterfly, dragonfly, birds and damselfies. 
See, we saw in a today's discussion that southern fur banded royal and plain palm dart and also the spot puffins are all butterfly species. So, your answer here will be option A, butterfly. Okay. So, that's all about this prelims practice question discussion. Displayed here is a mains practice question. Please go through the question and write your answers and post it in the comment section. If you like this video, do like, share and comment and don't forget to subscribe to the Shankar IAS Academy's YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.